Good morning. I'm Holly Magnuson, and this is Ask the Security Guy with Sean Corman. Good morning, Good morning. Sean. Good morning. How are you? Doing all right. It's a you know, beautiful day out after a nice, nice rain yesterday. Yes, it was. And my poor dog uh, was kind of freaking out yesterday afternoon with the thunder. Ah, uh, okay. Well, and maybe it was the uh, the sound of the holiday season or savings rolling in. Holiday savings, yes. So that leads us into what we're talking about today. Very nicely, Sean. Thank you. <laughs> um, today we're going to talk about online shopping or talk about shopping in general because um, we do have the Christmas season coming up and um, lots of lots of things to be bought. So, Sean, um, what, what's, what do you want to talk to us about first? Well, so it is the season um, to be jolly and buy lots of useless stuff and all that fun fun stuff. Um, if you're like me and you hate shopping in department stores, uh, online shopping is the key to everything. Um, however, not all online shops are created equal. So we'll talk about that a little bit today. I um, also wanted to talk to a little bit about Android Pay and Apple Pay or iPay, um, how those applications work and are they safe to use. And just get into a little bit of just general best practices for making sure that your your money and your identity stay safe in the holiday season. Sounds good. And just as a reminder, as we're talking, um, you're always welcome to submit questions. Um, if you are viewing us from the events page, um, you can slide your mouse over to the left and there's a little button that says QA and it gives a, a a panel on the right hand side of your screen where you can ask a question. If you're watching through the YouTube um, feed and you want to ask a question, you'll notice in the lower uh, left hand corner of the YouTube screen, there will be the uh, join the conversation and you can click on that and you know it'll take you to the event page. So please, we love to have your questions, um, things that, you know, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be related to shopping. Uh, but if, definitely if you have questions about shopping and safety there, we want to hear about those. So, um, Sean, take off. So one of the things to think about as we, as we come into the holiday season, if you're shopping online, you want to make sure that your computer is up to date on its patches, that you your antivirus is not an expired subscription. Um, a lot of new computers that people get come with a one year or a 90 day trial subscription that will expire and will be usually very annoying about notifying you. But a lot of people forget to actually renew it. So you wanna make sure that your antivirus is up to date and that you've scanned your computer. One of the reasons for that is if you have malware on your computer, some types of malware has what's called a keylogger. And as you enter your credit card number into a site, that credit card information is also being transmitted off to a bad guy somewhere else in the world who would love to use your card. So just you know, make sure that your computer's up to date. Don't use anybody else's computer to do online shopping. If you don't control it, if you don't use it, definitely don't use a public computer. Or even I wouldn't recommend using public Wi-Fi um, for that kind of thing either. If you're going to do your shopping, do it at home. Yeah, um, I had a thought there, and you know, as far as you know, using you know public computers and stuff, um, just you know, because we never know what's on those machines. And um, Sean, how is the easiest way for someone to make sure that they have um, the current Windows update or um, Apple's updates? Well, with the Apple updates, it's a it's a little around the world to the left. Um, but you, you can go into system preferences and the updates icon is in there. For Windows updates, it's in control panel and you can just go and look for, um, do a search in the, in the control bar for updates and it'll bring you up an option to check now. And then for your antivirus, it all depends on which antivirus package you're using, but it will usually show up in the bottom right in the little system tray there. Um, so if you're using Symantec or AVG or ESET or any one of the popular ones out there, just go down there and make sure that you click on it and it says you're up to date and all is well. Thanks, Sean. So, uh, you know, and there's, there's another thing to think about, too. When we talk about online shopping or 
for that matter, going into a store and shopping. With the Home Depot breach, the Target breach, and all the other stores that were breached over the last two years, and what we saw was these major retailers lost a tremendous amount of data. You know, so personal data, credit data, all, all kinds of stuff. When you shop, one of the safest practices you can do is to use a low limit credit card for your purchases and then just pay it off when you're done. For a lot of people, they tend to use their, you know, if they're Bank of America or Wells Fargo, they have a debit card that goes directly against your checking account. So if that gets out and you have a fraudulent charge, that ties up your checking account. And for those of us that, you know, don't keep, you know, several months worth of of pay in their checking account on any given time, that can have a pretty disastrous impact on the seven to 10 days it may take the bank to clear up that fraudulent charge. Whereas with a credit card, if the same thing happens, it's usually a non-issue and their turnaround time is pretty quick. So, it's, and then if you use a low limit card, <coughs> it further reduces the impact that a fraudster can have on your credit. Uh, one of the things that I just recently got, you know, because of Google Wallet, and they actually have a credit card that you can get where you can use it almost like a debit card or a credit card against um, the money that you have on your Google Wallet account. Um, how do how do you feel about that? You know, I've thought about you know transferring X amount of dollars over onto it, so if something happens to it, there's a limited impact. Right, and it's another great way to go because it's a limited impact. That's not tied directly to your bank account. And therefore, if something happens, you're covered. So, and that, that also leads to a conversation about Android Pay and iPay. So, uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about, well, how secure are these if I take my phone and link up, you know, put my credit card in there and then do a tap to pay at a retailer, say Walgreens or whatever. So the way both services are set up is what they store on your phone is not actually your credit card. It's a cryptographic representation of it. Basically, it's a virtual credit card. And what that is, is a encrypted blob, so to speak, that syncs up with Google or Apple, depending on the service you're using. So when you tap to pay with your phone at one of these retailers, what happens is the, the transaction information goes to Apple or Google, depending on which one you're using. Google or Apple then brokers the transaction with the actual card. So they manage the transaction with the bank, whichever bank it is that you're using. Information comes back, successful or declined, and that's transmitted back to your phone and the, and the retailer's terminal. So what's nice about that is no data is ever stored on your phone. Your phone will typically require another level of verification to unlock it to use the service, either a thumbprint or a pattern or a pin code or something. Even if the device is unlocked, they're gonna ask for you to unlock it again to make the transaction. What that addresses is our original concern with NFC, near field communications, that essentially that tap to pay, was the idea where if somebody brushed against you in a store with a certain type of phone with, you know, specific software on it, they, <coughs> they could get your payment information through that, through that kind of bump. Because now the newer versions of the software require that second level of authentication, that's not as much of a concern anymore. The other nice thing is because the actual card data is not stored on your phone, if your phone's lost or stolen, there's that level of certainty that the, that card data isn't there. Now, you always want to make sure that you have your phone locked with a pin code or a pattern code or something. Because if it does get lost, you have no idea how or what they're going to do with that device. Or... You know, one of the things we always talk about is what's the single most important account that most people have? The email address. 
the email account, personal right. email account. Your personal email account. And a lot of people have that linked on their phone. So if your phone's unlocked and you have that personal email account there, there's a lot somebody can get into right from there by using that personal email account to do password resets at your bank, at your stores, or wherever else you may have card data stored. So I guess my question would be, will you, Sean Corman, use um, Android Pay or iPay? I actually set up Android Pay for this holiday season with a low limit credit card that I have, yes. I'm going to give it a try. I've done so there you... all the, yeah, I've done all the research on it. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a spin. There you go. Um, I do also, I, excuse me, I can't talk this morning. i um, just recently upgraded my phone. And one of the things, um, Samsung now has Samsung pay and, um, I haven't really researched it yet, but my general gut feeling is I won't go with Samsung Pay just because I other experiences I've had with their products and services. So, Yeah, and, and for me, that would be a gut check, too. Um, I, I have more trust for Apple and Google than I would for someone like Samsung. Yeah, I just can't. You know, I haven't set up um, either um, Android Pay either. I've got my Google Wallet and the Google Wallet card um, that's worked out really nice. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I just, a $50 credit if I set up Samsung Pay just isn't enough incentive for me to, to go there. Yeah, that'd, that'd be a tough sell for me too. So, but you know, a lot of this, is, this comes back to, you know, just basic practices that we should be doing every day, not just in the holiday season. You know, use your credit card for purchases because the impact there is minimal. Check your credit card statements frequently, at least every week. You know, don't wait till the end of the month. And with online banking, it's pretty easy to do that now. Mm -hmm. um, monitor your credit. Credit Karma, for instance, great service, free. Keep an eye on your credit, and we'll also alert you with new things that come in. <coughs> the reason we we talk about this so much, especially this time of year, it's because this is also the time of year when we see the most fraud. So be safe. Know the devices you're, you're operating on, you know, and make sure that you're the one that actually has control of them. Yeah. Um, what about the new um, technology that has come out recently on our credit cards and debit cards with the security chip? Can you talk about that a little bit and does that really give us another level of protection? So, uh, yeah, we will talk about that a little bit. Um, the smart chip that you see on your credit card now um, is basically it's a chip and pin type of processing. Now, it is not bulletproof, but it's been around for over a decade. I was working for a company in the 90s that was selling these cards and making these cards for various countries in Europe. Europe has been using those types of cards for a long time, and the U.S. is just now getting around to it. Some interesting points about it, the mag stripe on the back of your credit card is very easy to read, and it's also very easy to duplicate. And you can buy credit card readers and writers on Amazon for about 20 bucks. So it's not like you even have to go to a special place to get this stuff. And card stock's cheap, too. So duplicating these cards isn't that difficult. And some of the older type of operations, what they would do is they would get a hold of stolen credit cards from pickpocketing or any other type of, of mechanism, go to some, some guy in the back of a van with a, a card um, duplicator set up, and they'd make a bunch of cards, and then they'd go shopping right there on the spot before anybody knew what was going on. <coughs> Pardon me. With chip and pin, it's almost impossible to duplicate what's on that chip because it's encrypted. However, while the U.S. made good strides in adopting the chip, <coughs> pardon me, we still have the issue with the mag stripe still on the card because we're running dual, so they're not that secure. 
And we're still doing signature based instead of pin based. Meaning even though you would give the card to the merchant, they insert it in their reader, it's reading on data off the chip. Great. The second level of verification now is still a signature because the credit card companies in the US want, didn't want to make the culture shift from signature based to having to enter a PIN to complete the transaction. So even though the, the chip technology has the potential to greatly enhance our security around credit card transactions, you know, the physical ones, we've done what we've done with it has essentially taken most of the security away from it. Well, that's been my experience in because uh, my bank card right before I went to my uh, trip to Oklahoma last month, I got my new bank card and everything. And um, the retail outlet that I used a couple of times, you know, comes up with, you know, the whole idea of, oh, do you want cash back? And I would say no. And it would come back and say transaction canceled. Right. And I had to use the mag strip. And, um, you know, when it has worked properly, it to me, it's no more secure than it was. You know, it's, to me, it's less secure because I'm just sticking the card in the machine. I'm not having to sign anything. I'm not having to enter a PIN number. It's just, you know, stick, you know so if you right. steal my card, you're still going to get about $12 worth of merchandise out of my account. <laughs> but, you know, and, and it's again... So, and this is often the case when we talk about our computers and the security there. Well, they're as secure as our use of them. If you have a computer system sitting on your desk, <coughs> Windows or Mac or pick your platform, all have great security controls that we tend to turn off in the name of convenience. Or we use weak passwords or we don't let our don't keep this, you know, our Windows updates or our Apple updates up to date. We let our antivirus expire. So in essence, we become the weakest link in the security chain. So security has a lot to do about how we use the tools that are available. Because at the end of the day, it's not about is it possible or impossible to be hacked. Anything can be hacked. What you want to be is more difficult than the next guy. You want to be annoying enough that the, the attacker, the criminal, is going to find lower hanging fruit, somebody easier to compromise. And by using a good password, by taking the basic steps, keeping your system up to date, making sure you have a good you know, pin code on your phone or a passcode or something, even a fingerprint swipe is good. Using a password manager so you can keep all these things straight, or more accurately, so you don't have to. But again, using good passphrases to protect things. Don't use the same password everywhere. You know, use something unique and use your password manager to do that work for you. So, just yeah, I love yeah, I love having a password manager. It has just made things so much easier, and you know, then I only need to remember a couple of really strong passwords to get me into everything I need. So. Right. Let's get back to online shopping and talking about when I, you know, how can I tell whether a site is reputable um, or what things do I need to look about, look at when I go to a website and I'm going to start shopping? Well, one of the, the easiest things to, to look for is use sites that are well known. Amazon, Target, Home Depot, all of the major retailers not only have you know, recognizable websites, a lot of them also have apps for your phone or your tablet. So for instance, if you want to do some shopping on Amazon and you want to be certain about the security of the connection to the site and you're shopping from your phone or tablet, use the store app. Another way if you're in a browser, uh, look at the, in the browser URL, the address bar, on the left, you'll see a lock. If the lock is there, it's a, it's a good secure connection. If not, you really need to be looking at why it's not. Because unless that lock is there, you never want to enter in any information. Especially not payment information. Exactly. 
Uh, once in a while, I've seen um, sites where it's got the lock and it's got the HTTPS, but there's a line through it. What uh -huh. is that trying to tell me? That what that's telling you is their security certificate, the piece of information that makes that connection secure, is either expired or broken. So if you see that line through it, or it's a self-created certificate. <coughs> Which, if you're seeing that on a retailer site that's asking for payment information, run far and fast. So, yeah. So, basically, we, we want to see that lock, that HTTPS. Um, yep. More and more, we're seeing um, a, like a green banner that says, what, VeriSign, I believe? Uh -huh. So, that's an extended verification. And it's just a higher level of trust. Most banks now have that EV cert. And it's very difficult to get and it requires an extensive amount of verification for the institution to get that. But you have a higher degree of certainty that you, who you're dealing with is who they say they are. Very good. Um, so far, no questions yet. If you have a question about online shopping or you know, things you may have heard, um, about you know, different security things, it's been pretty quiet. It's a little a little unnerving how quiet the security world's been lately. Have, have you heard anything, Sean? That no, it's it has been an oddly quiet month. Um, we haven't you know we we've seen some little stuff here and there, um, but it it's been eerily quiet. So one can hope that the uh, the criminals are taking some time off and leaving us alone. Sadly, they're probably taking time to come up with a better plan to, you know, break something big. Not that I'm cynical or anything. Well, yeah, normally when you see calms in the storm like that, is they're preparing for something new. So again, with no questions. Um, if you do have one, you can go ahead and um, post that up. Um, and even after the show, if you think of something, you have questions about you know shopping or other security topics that you would like to see us talk about, feel free to either email me, Holly Magnuson, or the ISO at apu.edu um, account. Um, We've uh, got a security awareness class. I should promote that next Tuesday at 2 p.m., I believe it is. Uh, we, we have uh, our cybersecurity training, which if you've not attended that, um, I think it's a really good opportunity, good time. Um, Sean and I tend to be very entertaining. Um, but it's about an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, we try. It's uh, now about an hour and 15 minutes. We'll be meeting on West Campus, so parking is not quite as bad um, to get to on a Tuesday afternoon. Um, but that will be happening in Duke. I believe it's Duke 513. But if you'd like to come to that class, you can check out the training schedule or just shoot me over an email, and we'll get you, you know, more information on that. So. So do we have any more questions or any? No, questions? no, no questions. Um, everybody seems to, you know, be thinking about their Christmas list. Any, um, any great plans for Christmas this year, Sean? No, nothing, nothing spectacular this year. Oh, it, be either. It's yeah, going to be. So with that, uh, just a reminder: next Wednesday afternoon, we'll be hanging out with IMT at two p.m. I'm um, going to be talking with Rob Davis um, about some in looking at some Google stuff and things that are going on with Google. Uh, then on November 20th at 2 p.m. will be Final Friday Wrap-Up. We'll be doing, it is the Final Friday, Working Friday of November. I'm getting ready for the holidays. And then Sean will be back a month from today, four weeks from today on December 2nd at 11 a.m. for Ask the Security Guy. And you know, who knows what will happen in the month of November that will give us, you know, things to talk about. Never can tell. Never can tell. Uh, any other final thoughts, Sean? No, I think that about covers it. You know, just, you know, be safe and be thoughtful as you, as you get into the holiday shopping season. And um, again, just be very careful about what information you provide. Yeah, I have started getting very diligent about getting my receipts, and I've actually the last three months now, you know, I put those receipts in an envelope by month so that 
you know, as I look through my my credit card statement or my bank you know, bank statement, if there's anything questionable, I can go back and look for receipts because sometimes I buy things and I don't remember that I bought them, and so you know, try to be diligent. Yep, yep, and it's also good to have that for backup if you ever have a case where you have to dispute something. Yeah, because I can, you know, hopefully my goal is I can show, you know, show them, hey, this is all the receipts. I didn't buy this or whatever. Right. Um, so, yeah, I had an instance just uh, about a month ago where my credit card company actually called me, and uh, they said, hey, did you buy something in Ohio? Uh, no, but apparently my card did. Nice. Yeah, uh, I think it was last last year, a year ago in February, uh, my mom bought flowers and wine on her Discover card. And oh. um, Discover called her and said, yeah, we're thinking this is not yours. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> they were very good, you know, to her. They you know, got her a new card sent out right away. Yep. But. Yep. So we're, we're seeing improvements in the turnaround time. Um, but again, I've only ever gotten those calls from my credit cards, never from my bank. Yeah, I've never gotten anything from the bank. Um, I did have my my credit union did contact me after the Target breach, just kind of a you know if you used your Target card or if you used your card in Target during this time frame, you know be aware type thing. Right, right. So, All well. Righty. With that, we'll say goodbye. Again, you guys know how to get a hold of us. ISO at apu.edu is a great way if you've got questions. And we will see you next month. Bye-bye. Right, sounds good.